today is Dr. Edward Bassingthwaite. He is a perpetual student of life, an explorer of human potential in all dimensions of being. He has recovered from chronic fatigue syndrome, and he's passionately devoted to expanding well-being. And that's a mouthful, but we're going to find out how applicable that is to the voice, which is connected to everything. And he is, I'm very proud to say, my student and a, a singer-songwriter, so we're going to be talking about it all. He's the founder of Whole Energy Body Balance Method, which is an integrated, comprehensive system of embodied awareness, movement, healing body work, and energy work for pets, people, and horses. He practices as a holistic veterinarian, makes music as a singer-songwriter, creates visionary abstract art, loves to dance, grows food, walks in nature, and has a deep devoted spiritual practice of movement, qigong, meditation, and service to life. So, Dr. Ed, welcome to All Things Vocal. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, Judy. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> First of all, uh, we're doing a bit of chime traveling right now because as we're having this conversation, it's evening for me in Nashville, but for you, it's tomorrow morning. <laughs> so tell everybody where in the world you are right now. I live in Frankston in Melbourne in Australia. So it's just nine o'clock in the morning, nice, bright and early, a bit chilly. <laughs> we have to take that in consideration when we do our vocal lessons, don't we? <laughs> we do. <laughs> um, all right. Take us into your story, especially as it moves towards being a holistic veterinarian who sings. Okay, so um, I grew up on a cattle property that it would be a ranch for you American people in the north of Australia here. So um, I grew up in a very conservative country sort of culture. Um, I was very passionate about working with and riding and competing on horses as a young man mm. and my my love of animals led me into veterinary science i then graduated from the university of queensland in 1995 with a bachelor of veterinary science and went into general practice in mixed practice um i had an awful job my first job the boss was just diabolical it was terrible <laughs> terrible hated it the work <laughs> paying dues huh <laughs> <laughs> paying dues so i only lasted about a year and a half there then i had a life-changing meeting with another veterinarian shortly after that when i was doing a, a temporary job a fellow called dr tom ahern who had worked out a way of working on horses necks he'd take horses with a forelimb lameness that had been x-rayed and nerve blocked and they couldn't find any reason for it and he would um, mobilize the neck and the lameness would go away. Oh, wow. So this was really fascinating for me. And <laughs> he was a lovely man and very generous with his knowledge and sat down and gave me a couple of hours of teaching. And my next thought was, well, what about dogs and cats? Because they have necks too. Yeah, they and do, don't they? They do. And in those days, there were no trainings available for hands-on work mm -hmm. in animals. So I just started... I suppose probably coming from the country background of if you can't do something, you just find a way to do it, right? You have to a lot mm -hmm. of time when you're working with animals in the bush. Mm -hmm. So I just started getting my hands on animals and feeling into their bodies. And I, I started finding a whole lot of stuff that I didn't know was there until I really started looking for it. I have a and feeling one of your giftings is some, is the, the way you use your hands and the way you sense things in your hands. So, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the start of me really working hands on and the very beginning of developing the whole energy body balance some um, 23 years ago that was. Um, after that I went and worked in the UK for a couple of years and mm -hmm. that's where I became really unwell with chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, ah. I was I had a, a root canal done on a front tooth while I was there that had ended up, I didn't find out till probably, I don't know, 15 years later, had a chronic infection in it. It was a bad root canal. 
and my health just started to really slide steeply after having that root canal done. It's slow poisoning, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and about about 18 months after the root canal, I, I crashed. I had a flu and I just was really unwell. I was down to 45 kilos, extreme fatigue, extreme body mm. pain and tension. My mum and dad came to visit and thankfully they, they took me home because I don't know if I would have been able to get home on my own without their help. I was so unwell. Then the chronic fatigue, Western medicine helped me with some of the major symptoms, but they ran out of answers pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And anything Western medicine calls a syndrome, you know they don't know what's going on, basically. Syndrome. Yeah. So um, that led me to explore a whole lot of alternative holistic health stuff. I, I started seeing a, a massage therapist in our local town who was also extremely intuitive and an energy healer, and I found that his sessions really helped me feel better. Mm -hmm. And I, I studied energy healing. I uh, studied a thing called the EMF balancing technique, which I don't practice anymore, but it was just amazing for me at that time because it opened up a lot of sensitivity to energy and it also helped me feel better. Then I had a long period of being chronically unwell. Um, I think we, when we first started working together, that was going on, wasn't it? That was going on, and it, yeah. you know, when I first met you, it had been going on for some 10 years before that too. Gotcha. It's been a long time where I would go to a new holistic practitioner and they would implement all their things and I'd get a bit of an increase in well-being and it would last for about six months and then everything would stop working. I'd go back to where I was and I'd go to another practitioner and just cycled through that for a long time until I got on to Qigong mm -hmm. and I started taking herbs for Lyme. So I believe ah. that I had Lyme disease as well that I probably picked up also when I was in the UK because it's wow. endemic over there. Yeah. And um, in the last, I don't know, four or five years, I've had massive improvement in my health. But when I first started working with you, Judy, you know, to sing left me really unwell. Really weird. Day. And if I had mm -hmm. a performance, I would be completely shattered. My health would be shattered for weeks after mm -hmm. performing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so funny how sometimes those of us that, that find out practices that, that actually help, it tends to come from, you know, you having to go plow through the mud of your own disease or, you know, your own really dark times. And I'm, I'm talking to anyone that's watching or listening on All Things Vocal that's having a rough time. The thing is it can be used. I lost my voice from an, an endotracheal tube, lost an octave and a half of my range. And because of that, I had to learn everything I know that I can help you with. And the same thing sounds like happened with, uh, with you, uh, Ed. Uh, tell us then some more about this comprehensive holistic system of healing and training uh, for dogs that you call whole energy body balance. And tell us how this can actually help humans. Sure. So <clears throat> the whole energy body balance method is, well, the, the whole core of it, the, the core practice of whole energy body balance, the first thing I teach all my students and the, the practice that I encourage them to focus most, most strongly on is a somatic embodiment and energy connection practice. <clears throat> About three years ago, my second marriage broke down. Um, my wife dumped me and about six months after that, I got to a point of healing where I could have a look clearly at what was going on and realize that she had a lot of covertly narcissistic behavior patterns. So there was a lot of abusive stuff going on that I couldn't see because of also having similar patterns in my family of origin. Yeah, sure. And if, if you have those sort of behavior patterns in your family, they're just normal, right? Right. You can't, you can't see them because right. they're just normal. But as part of my recovery from that, I started working with a somatic experiencing therapist, which is a particular kind of therapy that focuses on you bringing attention into your body. That's somatic awareness. S-O-M-A-T-I-C. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so SOMA 
in the um, Latin simply means body. Body. Mm -hmm. So somatic body embodiment awareness. is kind of a tautology, really. It's saying the same thing. It's it's bringing awareness into the body. Mm -hmm. But that really changed what I do and how I teach that particular experience. So I've developed this practice of bringing awareness into the body, and I found that it 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 is the most powerful healing and spiritual practice that I've found in my life, which is why it's at the core of what I teach. But the, the whole energy body balance method, if you look at the name, the name really tells you what it is. It's looking at the whole being. It's working with energy. It's working with the physical body and it's bringing balance. Mm -hmm. So we work with the internal processes of that somatic embodiment energy connection practice for the human who is either the, the practitioner, whether they're going to be working with animals or with, with themselves or with people. The core practice is coming back into your body, bringing your awareness into this, this earth suit thing that our consciousness inhabits. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I got a question for you right now that okay. I just, it just hit me that this may have something to do with what you're talking about. Years ago, a voice teacher who has passed away since then, but uh, Jeannie Diva uh, taught me this thing that she called uh, per the purposed touch. And I uh -huh. think I've passed that on to you, uh, I think. Uh, if I hadn't, here you go. <laughs> uh, but if you feel tension in your throat or in your shoulder or wherever, you know, or in the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, sternocleidomastoid here that that can get tied on singers or the jaw or, or the or the squint zone if you touch it and you will it to relax and then you try to sing again the the larynx drops and relaxes the squint lets go the jaw opens up and what you're doing is you're bringing are you not bringing some awareness yeah. Of your of you of what's going on in your body by simply touching like a biofeedback sort of thing absolutely look touch in itself has healing qualities but when you bring intention to yeah. the touch and when you bring awareness into anything in the body then you automatically start to create change wow um, wow it does go together wow yeah. that's amazing so, so one of the things I say to my students is that awareness is the key to freedom Ooh. Yeah. So you can't change something you're not aware of, can you? That's that is the key thing, right? You can never change anything that you don't have awareness of. And a lot of us have so much subconscious tension and mm -hmm. other energy patterns within our physical body that have come from a lifetime of trying to survive in the human jungle, right? Mm -hmm. It's often a pretty traumatic, dangerous place emotionally, and especially if you're an empath and very sensitive, as I've mm -hmm. been super, super sensitive. Many artists my life. are. Yeah. 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 Wow. Huh. Okay. So uh, I understand that you are willing to give us a treat here, which is yeah. give us a whole, let's see, let me read this the whole energy body balance somatic embodiment plus energy connection practice okay yeah, that's so, a mouthful so this is this is the core practice of what I teach okay. and you know it's been influenced by a whole lot of different things over decades of this this work but I've had a couple of people in the last couple of weeks I'm gonna do a little brag here because I think it's healthy to brag now and then but I've had two different people both who have taught yoga and meditation for decades tell me that this meditation is the best meditation they've ever experienced which has been wow. pretty pretty big wow for me to have people of that level yeah so, wow maybe yeah. maybe i'm onto something here <laughs> so the first thing to do is to bring awareness to your posture so the alignment of your body as soon as you say you bring awareness to your posture everyone goes like this right? yeah <laughs> straighten up i saw you do that judy posture <laughs> So we tend we tend to slump, you know, a lot of us and myself, you know, I've been working actively with posture awareness for 
for many years, but I still have to bring awareness to it many times during the day because I forget myself. Mm -hmm. And then I have to remember myself and come back to alignment. So if you're standing or sitting, either way you can do this process. But the first thing is to bring some dynamic pressure of your feet into the surface that they're resting on. Now, okay. you can do this standing or sitting. If you're standing, it's more sort of sinking into gravity, so there's a rebound effect. But if you're sitting, you're actively going to press your feet into the floor a little bit. When you do that, you'll notice it gives you a sense of lightness in the upper body. Oh, yeah. It gives you lift through the upper body. And the next thing to do if you're sitting is to wiggle your sit bones so that they spread out a little bit and then let them sink into the surface that you're resting on. Okay. Yeah. And then you want to relax all the tissues in between your sit bones and your pubic bone. So that whole area wants to be soft and open and relaxed. The next step is from your spine is to lift your heart forward and up a little bit. But it's your spine doing that movement and it should be gentle. All of these alignments should be without any, any effort or any forcing. It's just a gentle, almost imagining. Let your shoulders be totally soft, heavy and relaxed. Then you want to have a gentle sense of lifting from the point in between your ears and your jawbone. And then let your chin sink down and glide back just a little fraction. Now, when you do this, all your energy, when your physical is aligned, all the energy systems in your body are aligned and it opens up the ability for the natural energy flows in your body to be, be more open. And the more energy you have available moving through your body, the more you can bring to life. And if you're a singer, the more you can bring to singing in your performance. Now, the next step is to gently and continually bring all of your awareness into your physical body. And just simply be present with whatever's going on in your body, whatever's alive, whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're sensing, without any need to understand what's going on, without any need to try and change anything. It's just a pure act of witnessing, self-witnessing what you're experiencing in your body as you continue to bring your awareness into your body. Now, your awareness is effectively infinite, so there's always more awareness to bring into your body. So it's a continual practice of just gently bringing all your awareness home into this beautiful sacred vessel that we inhabit. And bring it, you can bring attention to the physical sensations, the texture of your clothing on your body, the feeling of the air on bare skin, the sensations of your breath as you breathe in and breathe out. Now it's really good to allow your breath to move in a gentle circle with no holdings or pause from in to out, out to in. So the in-breath almost blends seamlessly into the out-breath <coughs> and vice versa. And you want to breathe into your belly. So there's no effort in the rib cage at all. The rib cage is completely relaxed and passive. And you're breathing with your diaphragm right down into the pit of your belly, right down into your perineum. You can almost feel your perineum in that relaxed state, breathing out a little and softening like a balloon as you do that. And the next thing that we do in this practice is to bring all of our sensory awareness into and throughout our physical body. So you can bring all your auditory awareness or attention into and throughout your physical body. And you can almost imagine that every cell in your body is like a little ear, gently listening to everything that you're experiencing in your physical body as you continue to bring all of your awareness into your physical body. And bring all of your sense of smell and taste into and throughout your physical body so that you can smell and taste everything that's alive for you in your physical body. Bringing all of your sense of feeling into and throughout your body so that you can feel everything that you're experiencing. Bringing all of your visual 
attention and capacity into and throughout your body so that you can gently watch everything that you're experiencing as you continue to bring your awareness into your body. And bringing all of your cognitive awareness, all your sense of knowing and understanding into and throughout your body too, so that you can know and understand what you're experiencing throughout your body. And while continuing to maintain that gentle sense of bringing all of your awareness into your body, all of your sensory awareness into your body, bring your attention to the space under your feet. So you have your physical body, around your physical body there's an, a primary energy field like a bubble of energy and within that under your feet there's a natural energy connection with the energy field of the earth and from that there's a natural upwelling of chi that comes up through your body, flows out through the top of your head and circulates around. Now this has been there your whole life so you're just tuning into a natural energy flow that exists within the human biology. This is yin chi or more feminine nature of energy flowing up through your body, out through your head and at the same time being aware of the space above your head and here there's a connection point with the sun and the universe and there's a second natural flow of chi down through the body, out through the feet which is more yang chi, masculine chi. And with your heart center, there's an energy center in the middle of your chest which is going, which is, can draw on that energy. It can drink in the yin and yang chi and combine and merge that energy and then radiate it out to fill your whole body and energy field. So it's like you can fill yourself up and then you can flow this energy out to everyone you meet, but particularly your audience, you know, you can then express more energy through your voice and through your gaze when you're connecting on stage. And that's the practice. Wow. That's so incredible. There's so many parallels to the, the voice path that I use to, to teach, uh, the pelvic floor or heels that I would power our voice from, you know, mm -hmm. wait, if, once you tap into a, a truth, you, you find yeah. it everywhere. It's like you said, it's our awareness is infinite, but our giving out is also can be infinite if we are well ourselves. And yes, it, yeah, we, we have to fill our cup first. Yeah. So another thing that I teach with this whole thing of working with energy is that you always want to be filling your internal reserves and you never give your personal energy out. You're filling up from the earth and from yeah. the heavens and filling yourself with that and then overflowing it to your audience. And yeah. then you come out, everyone comes out ahead. Now a lot of empaths and healers give all their personal energy into the situation and they're left empty and hollow Burn and you know I, sp I speak from really deep personal experience on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know I heard it, I heard it that described in a financial way, a lot more <laughs> earthy way. Somebody told me never give from your principle, always give from your interest. Yeah, <laughs> right. well it's the same and, thing. And that way, that way the principle keeps building that which can be given out <laughs> otherwise yeah, yeah. you're you'll be empty which is why i tell artists you know when you're connecting with people you don't have to give everything or tell everything about yourself in these interviews and things like that you want to you know only give out what you want to give out that still makes you feel Absolutely. safe and whole and and not intruded upon even jesus went off to you know by himself sometimes away from the crowd so I think uh, you know every wise person that's ever lived has had some private time and had some things that they don't share. So I had a, I had a really beautiful woman recently t tell me, you know, we're talking about containment and containing your energy and not leaking. Ooh. And the other thing she said to was me said to me was undress slowly. It's way more sexy. <laughs> And I think you can apply that to, yeah. to a lot, you know, performance. Yeah. If you're doing a set of music, undress slowly during the set. I mean, not literally, but metaphorically right. in terms right. of how deep you go with 
your stories and the banter in between. You don't dive straight into right. something really, really juicy straight in the first break in between your first two songs. Do you? <laughs> you, you might have a little lighthearted moment so that people can open up to you and get to know you right. and then, then later you can go really deep emotionally if you if you open the door gently, whereas if you go in really deep emotionally straight away, then you can break the rapport with your audience and actually destroy the whole situation. It, it's a wise uh, thing to think about when you're creating a set list or creating a sequence of your album. Yeah, and the, the other thing I wanted to mention too was that this the practice that I just led you through, mm -hmm. um, that has a really deep physiological and emotional effect on everyone in the room. So when when I'm teaching with animals, with with dogs, I'll sometimes have live sessions and at the beginning of the day, right, you've got people come in and their dogs come in, they all get settled and all the dogs are going, <laughs> what's going on? I'm in a strange place and there's this other strange dog over there and I'm not sure about him and there's, you know, the first thing I do is lead the whole room of people through the process oh, and you wow. see all the dogs go like this. Really? Now we're not directly interacting with them or right. touching them, right? So it's purely what's going on internally reading. in the humans that mm -hmm. is affecting their physiology and how they're feeling. Wow. And I see this too often when I'm working hands on with a dog, I'll, I'll mentally go through, run through and refresh the process and when you get fluent with this process, you can do it literally in a matter of a few breaths. You know, one breath to bring all your awareness into your body, second breath to be aware of the flow of energy up through your body, third breath to be aware of the flow down, fourth breath to connect with the heart and radiate. And nearly always I'll see a physical response in the human and the animals in the room of relaxation wow. signs. So you're not just affecting you, you're affecting everyone around you when you do this sort of work. Yeah. Wow. Well, what do you do with your hands with the dogs or the, the, the other horses? Well, there's a whole range of different, I think when I teach the Web for Pets bodywork online training, it's a two-day intensive. So there's a whole stack oh, of gotcha. stuff that we go through. Tons there's an stuff. assessment process and there's, there's probably 24 other different hands-on skills that we teach over the two days. So there's yeah. a whole lot of stuff. But somehow you communicate with the animal uh, by touching it. Well, we Do you su sort of suggest to the animal by touching it? And I'm, I'm asking uh, because this would have to do with humans too. Of course, they can understand what you're saying, but an animal can't. How do you? Okay, so animals can understand a lot. In fact, animals can understand nonverbal communication about a million times better than any human. So when an animal wow. comes in, I start communicating with the animal with, with softening my eyes, with slow blinks, with um, being very careful about the intensity, intensity and direction of my gaze with them. Mm -hmm. um, some dogs, if they're particularly anxious, I'll look up and away and expose my throat a little bit to them to say, look, I'm no threat, here's my throat. Um, how then I move with the dog in terms of moving into their space and moving them around. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot that can go on. Then when I get hands on with them, I'm really intensely sensitive to the, the slightest communication in terms of facial expression, breathing, tension, mm -hmm. movement. And I'm responding to that in terms of if I sink into a sorbit and they tense, I instantly relax. My hold even though I might not disconnect from the animal, I reduce the pressure, right? Mm -hmm. And the animals very quickly go, oh, this person's listening to me. And you can apply all of this again with performance because in performance, you're going to be putting pressure on your audience with the intensity of your gaze, of your presence, of your voice, of the emotional mm -hmm. intensity of the songs, of how you move on stage. And you can respond dynamically to the audience in terms of their communication back to you, right? Mm -hmm. right. So you could you could think of your audience as one big big dog, mm -hmm. and communicate and, with them like that. Yeah, and I always like to think about communicating to an audience as one heart, anyways. You know. Yeah. 
And so yeah, you've, you've inspired me to write that song. <laughs> because of that comment. Awesome. Right. Okay, well, speaking of which, where do you perform? And and actually, you know, what inspires you to write and, and do music? You, It's not like you have a lack of things to do in your life. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I do make time nearly every night of the week to sing. Oh, I love it. Singing, singing is another core practice for me. I think that music has got so much in it as a life practice, as a spiritual practice, as an artistic expression of being, that it's one of those things, um, <clears throat> I can't remember the name of the cellist, but he's one of the, the greatest cellists who ever lived, and he was in his, in his 90s, and he's still practicing five hours a day, and someone said, why, why are you still practicing five hours a day? He said, I think I, think I still have room for improvement. <laughs> and, okay. you know, I yeah. just thought, I want to be like that when I'm in yeah. my nineties. Larry London, who is one of the, the top drummers in the really in the world, was a, a dear friend of mine, and I'm very proud to say he was on maybe both my records on MTM. But anyway, he he did become a really dear friend, and then he he contracted uh, some kind of heart uh, issue, uh, congenital or or, or mm -hmm. something. Uh, but it, it, he knew he only had a year to live, and so a, a mutual friend of ours, an engineer, came to me one, one day and said, you're not going to believe what Larry's doing. And I said, what? And he said, he's taking drum lessons. And you, <laughs> you got to understand, Larry gave, it was called DOG uh, percussion uh, lessons all over, he had DOG clinics all over the world. Yeah, yeah. And I said, what is he learning? And the answer was, how to hit the head. <laughs> yeah. That is it, because that's the fundamental skill, right? Well, and one of the things that always amazes me is that, you know, I've had my guitar for quite a long time now. I've got one custom made by a fellow called Trevor Gore here in Australia, and it was just, it is the best guitar on the planet, I swear. <laughs> but when someone else plays this guitar, it sounds like a different guitar, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing. And, and singing has been a part of my life since I was at boarding school. Now, I hated boarding school. It was diabolical for me, but they had, they had a choir in church. And I sang in the choir. Um, I played in the band there. I played trombone in the band. And then when I was 21, I bought myself a guitar for my 21st. And <laughs> wow. I've been, I wrote my first song in 1996. And that was triggered by a friend of the family being, um, well, nearly killed by a husband. Wow. You know, my mum rang up and told me about this and I, I sat there, I was just in shock that yeah. someone that I knew should be so horrifically physically abused, you know, and I, I wrote the lyrics and then went home that night and put it to music, which is the other way around than nearly every other song I've written has come from chords first, lyrics later. But <laughs> Wow. Wow. Um, and I've been writing ever since and been working with you, Judy. And I mean, you've been a, a massive, beautiful influence in my life in so many ways, I can't tell you. It's such an honor, man. You know, to, to be working with someone like you who has gone through what you've gone through and learned what you've learned, to feel like this synergy is going on. You know, I mean, I want to learn something every day. And yeah. so. I think, you know, it, it's just, it's mutually beneficial in so many ways. Absolutely. Um, but where where do you perform? Okay, so I, I don't perform a hell of a lot because I have, I have my company, Whole Energy Body Balance Proprietary Limited, so we're doing teaching people all over the world with that work. Mm -hmm. I work two days a week in a beautiful holistic veterinary hospital here in Melbourne, which I just started about seven, eight weeks ago. Oh, mm. wow. And um, what I have been doing is that about every every um, three months or so, I, I have a, a house concert here in my home. That's great. And, and I've given Judy a link to a recording of the last one to share with you all so that you can pop yeah. in and listen. I've got some awesome musicians sitting in with me on that. It, it, and it's on your Facebook page too, right? Yeah. It's somewhere. Yeah, it so so I definitely will, will link to that. Um, okay, so... What are the things that you can offer people that are on your website? Um, 
Well, come come through to wholeenergybodybalance.com. I have there's a whole lot of stuff there. I also have two free regular webinars. Yeah, I saw that. You have uh, one, two, one is two. one mm-hmm. is a masterclass on silent pain in pets. Uh, now, silent pain in pets is a really really big problem. More than huh. half the animals that come into me have significant soft tissue body pain that the humans don't even know it's there. Wow. And what's more, um, vets in general are not trained about neurofascial soft tissue pain and not trained how to assess for it. So it's not uncommon for vets to miss it. Mm. So I will give Judy a, a link to the registration page for that. Um, please feel free to come along and have a listen if you've got animals or um, you, mm-hmm. need to, you need to get this information on board because it's a huge problem. And the second one I offer is a free introductory workshop for the work with animals. Mm -hmm. And what we do is that we go through the somatic embodiment energy connection practice. We go through a simple bodywork skill, which is a somatic relaxation technique, which is really good, particularly for anxious animals, but it's also an all over gentle physical um, release. And then we do a simple skill from the advanced web energy work for animals which is our second online training mm-hmm. which is a, a a simple energy healing technique using color using color wow yeah all right and then you've got some serious uh, courses there too for people that want to go farther and you're yeah. gonna you're going to uh, delve into working with people too aren't you yeah so um i have actually worked quite a bit with people back in the day so Oh, uh, how many years ago would it be now? Probably eighteen years ago, when I was living in Townsville, um, I was working. We had a market stall every Sunday, and I was doing a lot of body work with humans at that time. So, huh. and mm-hmm. I've been doing body work um, with humans a little bit all the way through and certainly energy healing and life coaching with people. I've got a program where I've been doing quite a bit of life coaching with people mm-hmm. in the last year and, and seeing some of these people blossom in the most beautiful ways, which is really lovely. So in the, in October, we're going to be um, moving into working with humans in terms of having a whole energy body balance. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is this is a time. 2021 folks if if you're listening later yeah. uh, but check out uh, you, you can find everything uh, that you're doing on the whole energy body right that's right and then yeah. your music on Facebook so I will give those two links out and uh, thank you this has been a fascinating conversation really and I've worked with you for for you know a few years now I think it is a few uh, years, yeah yeah but, uh, you know, I, every time I learn something new. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm so glad you, you took time out of your busy schedule oh, to share ab- this stuff with us. Yeah. It's an absolute pleasure. And, and you know, when I first met you, I didn't really have a voice, right? Yeah. I I, have... I, it's been so fulfilling to me to watch your voice blossom and, you know, he, see hear your songs like really bloom and, and be delivered in the way that you you do now so yeah yeah so one, one thing too that I would say just before we wrap it up mm-hmm. um, if you want to sing you got to look after this thing this it's body connected right? mm-hmm. um, and part of looking after this body is having not only you got to eat right you know cut out the dairy cut out the sugar eat lots of fresh healthy whole foods but you got to exercise You've got to you've got to do weight resistance, you know, some level of push-ups and chin-ups or squats and things like that. And get into a qigong practice. Best thing I've ever done in terms of strengthening myself, not only physically but energetically. Um, energy Arts in Colorado in the USA have great online programs, and I highly recommend their Dragon and Tiger Medical awesome. Qigong as a as a daily practice. But okay. Um, you've got to do what I call hard now, easy later, because it's not fun. You know, my alarm goes off at 5.30 or 5 a.m. every morning of the work week. 
I spend an hour in the morning doing meditative and energy practices, then I get up and I spend anything from an hour to two hours doing physical stuff, which includes, you know, push-ups, chin-ups, some free weights, qigong, stuff like that. Um, you look it's... so good, my friend. You 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 yeah. really do. You radiate. Yeah, you you really have. I could, I've seen the transition. Yeah, you and, have uh, seen the transition. Speak. Yeah, but I'm just too. telling you. Um, <laughs> and you know, when I I I do chin ups in the morning now, I can do sets of ten chin ups. But two or three years ago, when I started doing chin ups, and I want to tell you this so you know where I came from, I had to stand on a stool to do one chin up, <laughs> right? So, and when I started doing push-ups, I couldn't do hardly any, and it was it took a lot of will and determination to actually push in a healthy way my body to do that. And I mm -hmm. really encourage you as a performer, if you're not caring for your physical vessel, you're leaving so much on the table. You're leaving so much on the table. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Yep. All right, my friend. Well, uh, I will cool. see you online at night you and on your in your mornings uh, someday soon. Uh, I love just knowing all this and knowing what your journey's been and knowing all the good that's come from even the bad. You know, even the yeah. the hard things that you've had to go through. Uh, you've become you know a, incredibly useful in the world <laughs> to make oh, the world a better place and help people and pets and animals. So, uh, yeah, everybody check them out. And like I say, I'll leave the links. And uh, we'll, we'll see you uh, around the globe, okay? Thanks, Dave. All right, take care. Thank you.